In the invasion of Mon Cala, Darth Vader wasn't the only one sent by Emperor Palpatine. In fact, Tarkin played a very big role in this attack as well. Once negotiations went sour, Tarkin accused King Lee Char of being involved with an assassination of an Imperial envoy, a diplomat that was sent to negotiate in the name of the Empire. Now Tarkin was ready for a military response. King Lee Char saw this as a direct attack attack on his planet and his people. They are not investigating, they are invading. The king threatened Tarkin with aggressive defense. On their part, Tarkin saw this as a threat and King Lee Char saw this as a warning. Needless to say, Tarkin was now furious. He only advised the king to stop fighting and turned him off. Next, he ordered Major Rontu to make a significant counterattack from the indigenous forces in the near term. This will be once they have removed their civilian population from their settlements above the surface. They had no idea of the form of attack the Mon Calamari would have, but whatever it is, Tarkin felt confident that they are familiar with every weapon system these people would have. The king, however, had nowhere to escape. Blindly following the advice of a Jedi, this act was precisely why Darth Vader was after him. Vader and the Inquisitors now trapped the king. And before they could arrest, the Mon Calamari used their connection to the ocean and nature to subdue the entire Dak City, flooding it before letting it fall into the hands of the Empire. This is what left Tarkin shocked, an unexpected turn of events. However, he knew that Dak City and others were merely outposts. Their true civilization lies beneath the surface and into the ocean. This action barely hurt them, but it makes the Empire's task more difficult. They can no longer use them as staging grounds. Now he turned to Commander Jordo. They had just lost significant resources, and he asked the Imperial Security Bureau officer of how this had transpired. Since he was in charge of knowing everything about this planet beforehand and collecting intelligence, why did they not know the Mon Calamari possessed this kind of capability? But the commander had no explanation. He assured him that he will redouble his efforts and redeem himself. Tarkin walked off and ordered him to do so, otherwise it will be a long fall to the ocean. While Vader was having his own troubles down below in the water, Tarkin had engaged his own forces from the skies. Giant anti-gravity platforms that could lower down to the planet with countless ships and men on board. Tarkin urged the Imperials to not underestimate Admiral Akbar and Radis. They undoubtedly have a counterattack in mind, warned Tarkin, but as much as they seemed confident, right at that second, one of the Imperials warned the Colonel that they have an incoming attack. Akbar was using Mon Calamari machinery and its brave soldiers to fight for the King and for Mon Cala. They were going straight for the Imperials. Once the TIE Fighters approached, the Mon Cala fighters dove inside the ocean so that they could not be hit. His plan was to get closer. If they launch before they're inside the perimeter of their point defense grid, then this will be all for nothing. They were coming closer and closer to the platform and once they were underneath, Akbar ordered them to attack. They lunged out of the oceans like dolphins and bombarded the Imperials with missiles. This platform was overwhelmed with fire. The Imperials tried but they could not do anything to defend themselves against this attack and last but not least, the whole platform came crashing down and exploded in a fiery ball. Admiral Akbar and the Mon Cala had done it, their first gut punch to the Empire. And now amidst this turmoil, they had also found the King. They were ordered to come back. Way up above though, Tarkin was informed that Colonel Bergen's sky base was lost. Tarkin looked as frustrated as ever, he only asked how. They were still analyzing the data, but it looked like the Mon Calamari had used a swarm attack with metal-cased missiles as opposed to energy projectiles, knowing what could hurt the Empire. Clever, said Tarkin, these were better odds of penetrating the sky base's shields. Using these missiles was smart as it penetrated the sky base's shields. Tarkin now turned again to Commander Jordo. Yet another piece of Mon Calamari military technology that they're 
colleagues in the Imperial Security Bureau should have told us about. Wouldn't you say, Commander Jordo, said Tarkin. Again, Jordo came with excuses. They have been in the system for merely some days. They cannot expect a complete picture of the planet in such little time. Tarkin agreed. He is realizing that he can expect very little from this commander. And thus, his order was such. He ordered them to requisition a set of Stormtrooper armor for Commander Jordo and send him down to the Mon Cala surface. Perhaps as a Stormtrooper, Commander Jordo will find himself to be more useful. This was the final punishing method of Tarkin. He did not force choke Commander Jordo as Vader would have or even torture or kill him. He simply demoted him from a commander to a measly stormtrooper and he sent him right into action to be killed. Commander Jordo started basically crying, swearing to Tarkin that he will redeem himself, but Tarkin was not even listening to him. He was done with Commander Jordo, and the punishment fit the crime. If you were not ready to be a commander in Tarkin's eyes, then you were good enough to be a stormtrooper. And thus the Empire had a rocky start on the Moncala attack. There are much more that we can cover that I will leave for the next few days in other videos. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching this one. And if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up down below, subscribe for dailies. Now you're going to have an awesome day, Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video, and may the Force be with you. Until then.